Hey all, welcome to a new DeFi weekly video. I know it's been a while. Um, apologies, uh, things with ARK have been quite busy and I'm keen to tell you more about it. But anyway, in today's video, I wanted to touch on a bit of a more advanced topic about uh, how proxies work. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Proxies are essentially upgradable smart contracts. So let's say you have this smart contract like this. It has some piece of code. The problem is this is immutable, meaning it can never be changed. So if you think about it, smart contracts, that, that, that's kind of scary. It's good and scary, but... Uh, it's good because um, it means that when you're interacting with a smart contract, you always know uh, what the code is. But the downside is, is if there's any bug, then the bug lives forever. So as you can see, this obviously isn't very optimal. <laughs> um, so... The way that we solve this problem is through our old friend here, proxies. Now, proxies are honestly one of those like things in crypto that's conceptually pretty weird to wrap your head around, but it makes sense once you get it. So uh, basically every smart contract, as we know, has its own hexadecimal address. So let's say 0xABC is some smart contracts address now there's basically two parts to a smart contract which i'll outline here the first is the storage and the second is the code slash uh, execution instructions cool so what a proxy does is it lets you keep the storage or extend the storage while swapping out the code. So what does that mean? Let's jump into it. So let's assume the Xerox ABC is actually a proxy. Cool. So what you can then to say is actually have uh, what's known is an implementation contract that it points to. So this is our implementation contract. So what really happens is if I'm, say, a regular user now, and I call this contract Xerox ABC, and I say, um, I don't know, let's say mint five tokens to XYZ, I don't know. So what is actually happening is it's the user is interacting with Xerox ABC, it's using the storage of Xerox ABC. So storage is in like, uh, this is say keeping track of everyone's balances, but the implementation of what the mint fact function actually does exists over here. So what we can now do is we can now keep track of everyone's balances, but in terms of what happens when we want to change someone's balance can depend on this implementation contract right here. And as you can see, this is really powerful because uh, it now means we can basically upgrade our smart contracts uh, to do whatever we want. The downside is uh, <laughs> the contract you're interacting with can completely change. Uh, so you could get rugged. Um, now, of course, like this, you can mitigate being rugged by essentially having the owner of the proxy who can change the implementation right here behind like a multi-signature wallet um, plus a time lock. And a time lock basically means that uh, it will take a certain amount of days before the implementation of the proxy is changed. So yeah, that's in essence all a proxy is and how it works. Um, Hopefully you found this useful, and I think just in context for future videos, I'm going to focus on making these less, quote, perfect and focus on just, like, publishing out more content. So uh, apologies if the microphone or quality isn't necessarily the best, 
but I'm trying to figure out how I can get back into the flow of things rather than trying to make the most perfect video. So anyway, I hope that you found this useful. And by the way, if you're a developer watching this, we're hiring at Arc, so please, please, please uh, drop me a line or feel free to apply. You don't need any crypto experience. We literally just need uh, good, regular Web2 engineers. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Bye.